I think I'm going to start putting in book reviews, especially considering that I want to start writing book reviews for a graduate magazine that is local. I feel if I construct my thoughts on these book reviews, perhaps if I get the opportunity to publish some, um, that would be great to be publishing within my first year of of um, graduate work. So I uh, had mentioned in an earlier video Bernard Balin's book about the ideological origins of the American Revolution. These are books we need to know. I'm, I'm gonna be honest, it's wonderful to know about the ISIS papers and say claimed as valid and Neely Fuller and um, Dr. Francis Christ Welsing and a lot of these great, great authors that we have in our community, but we also need to know what some of the great books in history are, or quote unquote, great books in history are. So we'll understand what are the thought processes and perspectives of the mainstream. And if we aspire to aspire, we need to have an understanding of that. Not necessarily talking about assimilation, but to have a clear understanding of the world around us and our environment. Because ultimately, that's what we're trying to do. If we're not, I'd really love for you to leave a comment and tell me what you're trying to do. Um, so we're going to talk about Bernard Balin. Uh, he's a Harvard University professor. And he came up with a very creative um, research technique. He wanted to study uh, colonial times. And particularly the pre-revolution. And he was wanting to kind of put it back old school. He's one of those, he's a what's called a consensus historian as to where it's like super red, white, and blue. You know, America does no wrong. Everybody loves America. America loves everybody, one of those guys. And he put out uh, some scholarship. I use that term very loosely to fly in the face of what had previously been taken as the status quo that had overtaken the, oh, the American forefathers are the greatest thing since sliced bread. And that, that lasted for a long time. And then Charles Beard came about. And Charles Beard was the first or one of the first economic historians. And he just did something funny. He said, hey, Let's look into the holdings of the founding fathers. And they saw that the voting of the founding fathers were very, very much consistent with their economic interests. And there was a very recent reevaluation of Beard's work and it upheld that primarily the forefathers were not necessarily great men. They, uh, they used freedom, liberty, and justice as rhetoric and buzzwords to basically fulfill their economic desires. Well, at, during the Cold War and the World Wars, uh, you know, a lot of patriotism came up in the United States. And this was published in 1967, so I would not be surprised if there was a little racism associated with this perspective. Um, the United States was really being looked at for its treatment of black people not being good <laughs> from 1619 to 1967. Uh, this was, I believe, two years after the murder of, Martin Luther King, of, of Malcolm X. Uh, four years after the murder of Kennedy, one year before the murder of Dr. King. 
so to write this in the midst of that uh, a it, it seems to be a cry for patriotism and support of the white establishment in the midst of the civil rights movement and what he did was he was given an assignment by the for like the editor-in-chief of the Harvard Library and it was a bunch of pamphlets you know just stuff from the times sermons and letters and and things of that period that weren't necessarily looked at as historical information but what Balin did was he took this information and used it as what the common people were thinking not necessarily the politicians because okay they're affected by money whatever so he wanted to get off of that and undercut beard because i mean facts is facts they were voting on stuff that they owned so he really couldn't discredit beard there so what he did was he said okay you said that the founding fathers were using liberty and justice and all of that kind of stuff as buzzwords and it wasn't sincere it was just rhetoric well he tried to prove that the people the common people who had these letters and the sermons at the church and advertisement for stores what was the what was the communique amongst the people that arose to the revolution and if it was the people were talking about liberty and justice and freedom obviously the it was the leadership was talking about it in a sincere way the two just kind of happened to line up that they made a bunch of money so what he did was he found all of these documents and aligned them in a way that did just that the problem was he had a lot of biases which he stated even in his foreword i think this and my work proved it i think this and my work proved it i think this and my work proved it well the problem is did you think that so you looked for that in the work you were looking for which made you pick certain things or did your work lead you to that and you were justified that's what the question is and it, it could have been either one but it did appear that there was a little bit of selective of uh, of uh, research because all of the documents he used was pro-revolution which there had to be uh some anti-revolution rhetoric out there um he also limited his area of research to large plantations so there's still a degree of wealth that's going to be associated with a large plantation. Are we talk still? Are we really talking about the common people? Um, it was it, it, it was several parts that uh, really came short, especially the chapter on slavery toward the end of the book it was it was a poor excuse for a for apologetic history towards slavery it, it, it was really bad I mean for a writing with this degree of value it was really bad even if even though I didn't agree with his 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 final result the fact that he was functioning at a level to say what the common people think is part of american history was great what where he was able to look at mundane information and pull history from it i mean innovative great use of resources and time so the work itself is amazingly valuable to history and historians. This was a well-received book, Pulitzer Prize. Um, but again, 
in it it was some of the biases come about but this is a book that we definitely need to read this is uh again bernard Balin, b-a-i-l-y-n the ideological origins of the american revolution basically putting together pamphlets of the day to represent the feel and conversation of the common person illustrating that liberty, justice, freedom were the concerns of the common people which were reflected by the founding fathers so when the revolution came it was not a bunch of rich men functioning toward their economic interests as Charles Beard had pointed out but that it was really in answer to what was being discussed but unfortunately it is reasonable to believe that these pamphlets were selectively chosen to reflect what he wanted to illustrate and his ultimate goal was to illustrate that the founding fathers were just and not functioning under their economic means so these books that are foundational in history, historiography and the study of our country, we should be aware of. We should know these titles just like we know titles of black authors, which I hope we do, um, because we have to understand what is around us. And again, I am an American. I, I as much as we function on that level of consciousness, there's nowhere else I want to be from. There's no other place I'd rather be. So I do want to understand my area around me and I want to make changes accordingly. So we need to, we need to know this information. So I, I am putting not only uh, Balin's book on, but I'm going to keep our, um, keep my book reviews going on here. So,